Grace and peace to you, and welcome to the Presbyterian Church in Morristown today. We're so glad that you're worshiping with us. And we are excited to celebrate our 2021 confirmation class with you. You'll see our confirmands throughout the service as they lead us in our worship liturgy, lead us in an affirmation of faith, and are formally presented as a class. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own understanding. Listen for God in all situations. God will lead you to your path. Let us worship the Lord. Knowing that we all worship a God who is full of grace and mercy, let us go before God and one another with our prayer of confession, followed by our assurance of pardon. God, we have committed injustices against you and our neighbors. Forgive us and remind us how to be a light for Christ wherever we go. Whether it's being patient with our siblings, compassionate to our classmates, thankful for our teachers, coaches, and mentors, kind to our parents, or loving to our neighbors, let us always reflect the life of Christ in all that we do. Let your spirit lead us back to you when we have wandered, and let us always have you near to our hearts. Amen. With great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, and made us alive with Christ, and has brought us atonement through the sacrifice of Christ. By grace, we have been saved. Good morning. I want to talk to you about joy today. The dictionary says that joy includes feeling good cheer and much happiness. I would agree with that. All of you bring me joy. But joy in its fuller spiritual meaning is expressing God's goodness, a deep and inspired happiness. In our Bible story today, Jesus is getting ready to join God in heaven. And Jesus knew that life in the world is difficult. And so he prayed to God for his disciples. And he said, while I was with them, I protected them. I kept them safe. No one was lost, but now I am coming to you and I ask you to protect them and keep them safe. Let them have my joy made complete in themselves. 
Life may not be easy, but with God leading the way, we know that we will never get lost and we will keep joy in our hearts. Let us pray. Dear God, as we search for the path that will lead us safely through this world, we place our trust in you and ask for your guidance and protection. Help us to always keep joy in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join us in our prayer for illumination. God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, let your scriptures speak to us today and lead us in the directions that you have called us to go. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Acts 1, verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 26. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted to share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all this time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed to Joseph called Barsabbas, who also was known as Justus and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them. And the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from John 17, verses 6 through 19. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words you gave me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and that they believed you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and all yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. I am now no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except for the one destined to be lost, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy and have made it complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong in the world, just as I do not belong in the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God will always guide me to where I need to be, and I am grateful for everything that God gives me and has given me. I will try to spread God's love and forgiveness to everyone around me, says one of this year's confirmands. One of my favorite things about the gospel is it's entirely oriented around storytelling, especially the stories of the early followers of Christ. I imagine them as those who discovered an incredible book before it made it to the New York Times bestseller list or found a soon-to-be famous musician while they were still performing shows in their basements. According to the Gospel of John, the first to be called as disciples are Andrew and Peter. 
They are so compelled by John the Baptist's declaration of Jesus as the Lamb of God that they immediately begin following Jesus. They want to know where Jesus is staying. Jesus invites them to come and see. Philip, the next disciple to be called in the Gospel of John, was from the same town as Andrew and Peter. He hears this incredible story, believes, and immediately tells Nathanael about this Jesus from Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Says Nathanael. Come and see, Philip replies. But there are many in the Gospel of John who are in close proximity to Jesus who aren't disciples, but whose story still unveils a truth about Christ. There's Nicodemus, who, like Nathaniel, has hesitations and can't comprehend how anyone could be born again of water and spirit. But it's through this interaction with Jesus that we receive John 3.16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that all believe may have eternal life. Another example is the Samaritan woman that Jesus meets at the well, who believes that Christ is the true living water and whose testimony and witness brings many in her town to know Christ. It's in these stories that we get a glimpse into how human nature interacts with the divine nature of Christ. Some believe that Jesus is the Messiah without issue. Some struggle and are left isolated from their religious communities. Some are a little bit more hesitant, and some want to dig deeper into the theology of it all. And further still, some still can't believe that anything good can come from Nazareth. Another one of our confirmands says, being spiritual and speaking with God has always been an amazing escape for me. Whenever I'm feeling lonely, sad, or upset, I always feel and take comfort in knowing that I will always have God by my side to help carry me through the hard times and guide me in the right directions in life. John 17, our gospel reading for today, is an uninterrupted time where Jesus prays over his disciples. According to John, this is the last encounter that Jesus will have with the disciples before the eventual arrest, trial, and crucifixion. There are two main sections to his prayer. The first, in verses 6 through 10, is Jesus affirming that the disciples have kept the word of God, that they know the words of Jesus, and have proclaimed that they have come straight from God, and believe that it was God who sent Jesus to earth to walk and to live with humanity. I know that God makes all things good, because he cares about every single one of us. God is very thoughtful and kind because God wants us to live in a good creation, writes another one of the confirmands this year. The second section, verses 11 through 19, is a prayer of blessing and of protection. Jesus knows that the lives of these disciples will be difficult, and perhaps that's even more on the mind of Christ, knowing what will come with the events of Easter. They will face ridicule and trial from others. They will be tempted with evil and they will have to endure all of these things without the physical presence of Christ in their lives anymore. We see in this prayer how much Jesus cares for these early followers. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. We learned from last week's homily that the disciples were no longer just servants, but they were friends of Christ, and are asked to live into the same sacrificial lifestyle that Jesus lived. Not only is Jesus praying affirmations, blessings, and protections over these disciples, but he is praying for God to treat the disciples in a similar way to how God treated Jesus, to proclaim the same truth that God has given Christ, to be protected and sanctified, but to also be united as one, just as God and Jesus are one, The disciples aren't just followers or servants, they're friends of Christ, and they are to be unified in their faith. They didn't know where their initial journey with Christ would take them, and many doubted Christ's validity, but now the disciples and other followers of Christ are the ones who will proclaim the good news to the ends of the earth. These individuals have heard the words of Christ. They've believed. They have walked in the same footsteps that Jesus has, and now they are ready to take up the mantle in a world where Jesus will be physically absent in just a few chapters. 
They will be the image bearers of Christ. Their journey has gone from come and see to go and tell. Another man says, faith connects you with your setting and pushes you forward, which is all that is important at times. If you feel unconnected to God, God is still with you. I see how to trust God frequently in church. You've heard throughout this sermon today quotes from our Confirmand's affirmations of faith, and later on we will read together an affirmation that speaks on behalf of this year's class. Just like the early followers of Christ, they have been on an incredible journey this year with their Confirmation program. Some members of this class weren't sure what their faith looked like at the beginning of our time together, and many were still processing how the pandemic had affected their social, academic, and extracurricular lives. Throughout our journey together, they asked hard questions, explored how faith, scripture, and theology all coincide with our daily walk with Christ, and how all of these things should compel us to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Just like the disciples, their journey of faith isn't over. It's just the beginning. They are the image bearers of Christ, these confirmands have journeyed from come and see to go and tell. Let us all, as a nurturing faith community, remember these followers of Christ in our prayers daily. Let us pray affirmations, blessings, and protection over these confirmands, because we all know that faith is complicated and comes with ups and downs. Let us all get to know these confirmands, these new active members in our congregation. They are incredible students who have mature faith, who love others richly. They have unique gifts and talents that our church needs to continue to propel our ministries moving forward and have a desire to serve the Lord. Ask them how they're doing. Ask them where they see God moving in our church and community. Ask them to serve on your communities. Ask them what it, they would love to see happen at our church and let's empower them to make it happen. Despite the pandemic that has drastically impacted the world, along with current affairs within our nation and abroad, I can always find comfort in the fact that the community within Morristown is always welcoming and supportive towards each other, writes another confirmand. These students love our church community. Let us take the prayers that we found today in John 17 and use it as a model for how we should pray over our newest members of the church. Let us nurture that love and let us be a church that is empowering our youngest followers of Christ. They are ready for it. Are we? Such as this unseen and 
and admit to what I mean in you and you in me. As with all things in the life of our church, Confirmation looked a little different this year than it has before. It began in August with a call to parents asking if their confirmands would be willing to participate this year and in what capacity. I'm incredibly grateful for all of our parents who navigated the hybrid nature of the program this year. Thank you for your flexibility and for your patience. Our classes began in October with both in-person and recorded lessons. Our classes discussed the Trinity, what it means to be Presbyterian, the sacraments of baptism and communion, and our Christian mission. You saw our confirmands lead different parts of our recorded worship during the year. They served in the life of the church, whether it was packing breakfast bags for Nourish New Jersey, attending a committee meeting, or helping spruce up the church during our spring cleanup days. We had a virtual group mission trip with YSOP, our usual service partner, in a program called Connects, which paired our groups together with seniors across the tri-state area who had been particularly isolated during the pandemic. They met with mentors over Zoom and discussed the Gospel of Mark. These meetings were so impactful that they were mentioned numerous times in their affirmations of faith and in their final meeting with session when they were voted on as active members in our church. I'd like to thank our mentors this year, Elizabeth Ennis, Beth Fisher, Bruce Fisher, Janet Foster, Jack Frabel, Lisa Frabel, Ken Hashagen, Wayne Rush, and Richard Schwartz. Your dedication to our confirmands is a blessing. Thank you. I would now like to present to you our 2021 confirmation class. Our confirmands are Jack Cottonor, Sean Kerno, Daniela Geary, Derek Hoover, Colin Hoppies, Kyler Krychevich, Callum McBain, Damian Oberding, Molly Oberding, Rebecca Andrejack, and Katherine Williams. These confirmands have done an incredible job this year. They've completed all of their confirmation requirements, they've written honest and theologically sound affirmations of faith, and they've done it all in a year that was particularly difficult. Congratulations, confirmands. We are all so proud of you. Please silently join us in our affirmation of faith written by our confirmation class. Faith is like a spark. It begins small, but when nurtured and cared for, can grow into something more than we could have ever imagined. We hold on to our faith, even when we feel like we are losing hope, because God isn't directing us to lead a perfect life, but is simply guiding us to the next step or moment of our life. Our faith is in a God who we know to be good. God is with us at all times, even when we don't feel connected to God, or when life seems so difficult that we don't know where to turn. God has created all things, both in heaven and on earth, to be good. God took humankind into consideration when God was creating the world and made us in the image of God. We know that Jesus loves everyone equally because we are all the children of God. Jesus showed this through the ultimate act of love, sacrificing his life for our sins. We believe in the Holy Spirit, which is within us and all around us, embodies God and connects with him and Christ. The Holy Spirit gives us the gifts, abilities, and guidance in order to preach the word of God and to help others. As a result in our faith in God, the example that we have in Christ, and the direction and connection that comes from the Holy Spirit, we know that as Christ follows, we are to pay the love of Christ 
forward to all people and things. We continue to show our faith and trust in God through prayer, no matter how big or small our concerns may be. We are also called in to live together with our church community. We are thankful for the mentors in the church who will walk with us in life and faith, both now and in the future. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to hurt many people, and we mourn and grieve with all of those who have been affected as a result of the pandemic. Let our hope in you remain and continue to provide us all with faith, hope, and love in you. Amen. God invites us to give the testimony of our hearts in practical offerings of time and money. Therefore, let us testify to God's love by giving generously of our gifts. Thank you for your support of our youth and the ministry of this congregation for the glory of God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, today we lift up to you our confirmation class and pray the same blessings over them that Jesus prayed over his first followers. We pray that they are protected from evil and are sanctified in your truth. Let them always reflect the love of Christ so that all may see your grace and mercy in the world. Let us surround them with your love and encouragement when their life becomes difficult. Let us all accompany one another as we travel the paths that you have made for us, O Lord. Provide with direction when we need it and encourage us to always be aware of the places that you might be leading us. Let us all be encouraged by the energetic and enthusiastic faith of this confirmation class and always empower them to be your image bearers. Today, we also lift up to you, Jean, and anyone else who may be on our hearts and minds at this time. We ask all these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. today, let us love others like Jesus has loved us. May we always grow in faith, hope, and love in God. Amen.